Hi and welcome to Worldwide Culinary Apprentice Online Cooking School. My name is Chef Roger and I'm about to show you how we make some braised pork belly. Belly. to use the technique called precise cooking but first I need to take my pork belly out of the brine it's been in a brine here overnight uh, the brine just gonna help for him to break down nicely and it's gonna intensify a bit of the flavor in my brine I have some salt sugar different kind of spices and herbs uh, let that set overnight and now I'm going to rinse it Put it into that bag and I'm going to seal the bag. So this is a technique called sous vide, uh, under vacuum. I'm going to seal it in here. I'm using for that a uh, sealing sous vide machine with a chamber. That's my chamber here. Uh, other sealing machine that you may see uh, for home use are the clamp one where you know you fit the bag into a clamp machine and boom it's going to suck the air out of that bag. Those work, but really not as good as those one with a chamber. Uh, the advantage of, with a chamber is there's, there's a little bit more force in that engine here and the compressor to extract that air and really push some of the aromatics around the, the protein that you have in, into it. Um, so that's, that's a great thing. I will use that machine and show how to do some uh, food modification texture with some fruit or so. You'll see how how, uh, and how that works and understand maybe better the process of a sealing sous vide machine. Okay, so my pork belly here, I'm going to seal it and I'm going to cook it here for 12 hours at a low temperature, a temperature of 62.5 Celsius. Uh, um, in Fahrenheit, that will give us, let me see, in Fahrenheit, this is. 180.6 Fahrenheit and to be able to keep that temperature for 12 hours I'm using what we call a immersion circulator yeah. this is like I said in another video of the water bath of the 21 century yeah. uh, it allowed me to fill up a container with water put that immersion circulator into the water, bring it to the temperature. It's better usually to start with the temperature, uh, the water close to the temperature you need it of, you know. So from the first set, you put it on hot and you make sure it's hot as possible before it goes into the bath. You save some time and uh, it's gonna be just quicker like that. So that thing here, that piece of equipment is gonna keep the temperature very precise for those 12 hours. You know, it's not gonna jump, from a temperature from let's say 60 degrees to 80 and things like that. No, it's gonna stay at 62.5 for 12 hours. Neat. That means that every part of that pork belly here is gonna be cooked exactly at the same temperature. I don't know if you braise food before, but when you cut into it, the temperature or the color of your meat is not exactly the same throughout the piece of meat because it didn't really cook evenly. You know, the outside cooked first and the inside cooked after. Here, it's going to be consistent because the temperature is set at a certain degree and it's never going to go higher than that degree. So all the meat is going to be able to be cooked exactly at the same consistent uh, temperature. For some of us, it's not really important. For some, it is. I thought I'd show you those techniques because in the modern time, we use that a lot. You may have heard about souving before and about uh, precise cooking. Uh, sous vide is not the fact of cooking into the water. Sous vide is to put your food into a bag, extract the air, and seal the bag. Originally, that technique is allow you to keep your food fresher for a longer amount of time because when there's no air into the bag, bacteria won't develop. Most of bacteria, some bacteria actually do not need oxygen to develop, so it happens. But you want to be very careful of what you, you're sealing. But anyway, without oxygen you will be able to keep your food for a longer time so the shelf life it's better uh -huh. okay so pork belly has been into the brine i'm going to take it now i'm going to put it here 
to rinse it. Rinse it a little bit like that. Let it sign it up. And now it's going to go into my bag. Nice. Before I put it into the bag, I'm going to fold the edge of the bag here so I don't put any moisture on the inside by where I'm going to seal the bag because if you do, you might not get a good seal. This way. And then take the bag and bring it up like that. I'm going to place the pork belly into my sealing machine. Huh? So that sealing machine here is, is a Vacmeister 4P120. Uh, it's a great piece of equipment. It's compact. It's not that heavy. You know, you can lift it easily. So you can fit that in your kitchen with no problem. Unless you live in a tiny kitchen, you, unless you have a small kitchen, then that might be a problem because it does take a little space. Uh, uh, anyway, great, great tool. If you want like th that kind of cooking, you need one of those. They don't just you know, cook food. I mean, they're not just used to cook food. Like I said, you can use it to preserve food. You can use it for uh, texture modification. Uh, you can use it to extract air from sauces, from custard. There's so much you can do with uh, that equipment and this one. And we're going we're gonna to learn a lot of those. I'm going to teach you a lot of those techniques that you can uh, get using that tool here. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, here I want a good, firm, tight um, vacuum. So I put the vacuum at the max, and because you can, you know, you can change the time on your vacuum here. See, 40 seconds, 30, 25. The more you go, the more air you remove. And I'm going to go max here, and now I'm going to press start. And here we go. So now the air is being extracted from that chamber, you know. So because it's extracted from the chamber, the air kind of focuses into the bag. That's why the bag blows a little bit. And then it's going to suck up everything out, compressing that meat into the bag. So when using that technique, you want to be careful because sometimes product could be a little bit more delicate than a pork belly. Pork belly, you know, it's nice and it's firm, it's mealy, it all well together, it's fine. If I had a piece of salmon here, it might be a little different. That beef here, show me that. That's right, uh, that reached the temperature that I want, almost, and it's gonna be ready soon. Beautiful thing. That immersion circulator is from the same company that make the ceiling machine, uh, Vacmaster, that's the model uh, SV1. I tried it before, it's really, really, really good. Uh, oh, that's gonna be ready. And here it is. Automatically going to lift itself up. Beautiful thing. Unlock it. Take it. And here we have that pork belly. That's sealed very well. Huh. So you seal something here. Um, now, now it's just ready to be cooked. I'm going to put it into the bath this way. Into that bath on the bottom, I have a rack that is for preventing the meat to stick to the bottom so you, then you don't have any circulation of the water under it. Uh, so you want to make sure you have that. So I place that little rack under it. So what's great about that uh, specific immersion circulator, it's the size. You know, it's a, it's, it's a great size because it, it allowed it to get a better or larger pump inside and you have a better rotation circulation of the water and you can cook a large amount of food in it. I could have a, a bag, uh, I'm sorry, a, a container here twice that size, filled, not completely filled, but you know, mostly filled with bags of food and cook it and the water will circulate everywhere. The small one, uh, they will never be able to do something like that. Uh, so, a little detail about it. There's a timer here that I put for 12 hours when I'm ready. When it comes to the temperature, I will press my plus on the timer and uh, the go here so the timer actually kicks on. Uh -huh. 
and now I'm just gonna wait. It's at 175, it should be at 180.6 in the next five minutes. So I'm gonna let it cook, I forget about it for, for 12 hours. So the pork belly has been cooking for 12 hours. I'm going to remove it now delicately because this is very fragile at that point. Whoops. And I'm going to put it flat onto that pan here. I'm going to let it rest for 20 minutes and then it will go into my ice bath that's right here. You want to make sure you wait 20 minutes before putting it into the ice bath because right now again the change of temperature will be too um, brutal if I was to put it directly into the ice bath and that will not be good for the texture of your pork belly. So my pork belly is cooked now. I'm going to remove it from the bag. I'm going to trim it, portion it. I'm going to saute it to develop a nice little color over, over it. I will then remove it, degrease the pan a little bit. I'm going to make a little brunoise with those vegetables that I have here, carrot, onion, celery. And I'm gonna add a crushed garlic to my pan. And I'm going to build my sauce in it. I'm going to sweat those vegetables, deglaze with a little bit of vinegar, apple vinegar here, apple cider vinegar, some oranges, veal stock, and a little bit of that pork stock that I'm gonna get out as I open that bag. I'm going to put my pork belly back into it and I'm going to glaze it with that juice. It's going to be something beautiful. Then I will serve it with those vegetables that I prepped uh, before. So those are some endive, carrot, Swiss chard and artichoke. If you want to see how I prep them, I cook them um, in my, with my immersion circulator after I sous it them. And that's a technique that you should be able to find on my channel now, how to cook vegetables sous vide. Okay, so let's open that bag and remove the pork belly. So what's left inside the bag, it's mostly the fat. I don't need it. It could be used for something, but I'm not going to. And here, look at that. See that? This is, this is gold. This is pure stock or I should say pork stock here but I'm gonna keep and using some other recipe I'm gonna put a little bit into that sauce that I'm gonna make after and keep the rest so I'm gonna clean that stock up put that on the side for now Now we're going to trim that. I'm going to remove the skin from the pork belly. Cut it up this way. Okay, now we're going to portion it. I'm going to have to trim the ends a little bit here. I'm going to trim this up so I can make nice and neat portion. Of course, all those trimming we keep, huh? you could treat that like, a, like bacon or for almost after. It could be served with a salad or, you know, there's so much you can do just saute it like that and as a little snack, beautiful thing. Okay, so now I'm going to make half inch slices here. I'm gonna keep the rest for something else. Train my hands. Okay. 
and I'm going to cut those in half. Okay. Now I'm going to heat up my pan. Wait for that to be hot. Add a little bit of butter and oil to it and I will start browning my pork. So while the pan is heating up, I'm going to cut my vegetable. I'm going to make a brunoise. A little brunoise. Brunoise it's tiny little dice of vegetable usually there will be one, mm, one millimeter to two millimeter thick either a square first you make a julienne and then that julienne you dice it Same thing with my celery. Celery, I'm going to cut it on a bias like that. Yeah. Brunoise, tiny little dice. Now the onion, onion we call that ciselé, to make tiny little dice also. Okay. Now that pan should be hot. I'm going to add to it a little bit of blended oil that I have here. A little bit of butter that helps to get a nice color. If you want to skip the butter, you could. Huh? Okay, I see it's getting a little brown, so I'm going to have the pork belly. Fat side down first. Like this, I'm gonna render a little bit of that fat as I'm doing that too. At one point, you need to lower your heat huh, to make sure you don't burn anything because the fat is hot and it's gonna stay hot. So just lower the heat so you can keep a better, you can have a better control over the coloration of your pork. Do not shake your pan. Uh, let it color nicely. If you start shaking the pan, it's gonna stick to the bottom, or if it stick to the bottom and you're shaking it, everything's gonna fall apart here. So don't shake the pan, very important. So we're getting a nice color here. I want a little bit more though. So remember that that pork belly was in a brine for overnight for like 10 hours. So you don't want to put any salt at that point on it. You want to wait till it's completely done. You can test it after and see if it needs a little bit more salt to add some. Because it's, it's salted already. Uh, just one thing to remember. Now pepper is something I could add at that point if I want. Look at that beautiful color that's developing here. Oh yes. I'm very excited because that actually is going to be part of my lunch today. So it's 
great. Pork belly, I love it. Very fattening though, huh? You can't eat too much of it. And now I'm gonna flip it on the side. We want to achieve the same color everywhere. Huh? This is what we want to do here. I may want to remove a little bit of fat now. Oh no, I'm going to wait. It's okay for now. So I'm playing also with uh, the heat here. Huh? If I feel it needs to get a little harder, I just, you know, crank the heat up a little bit. Um, you know, there's not a set heat here. You need, you need to play with it as you evaluate your meat, how, the way it's cooking. Okay. It will get more color also as we finish it into our sauce after as we use that sauce to glaze it. Testing it a little bit here, that helps for a nice coloration. I'm going to set some absorbent paper to let them rest on it after until I make my sauce. That's going to take a little bit of the, the fat away. To remove that right here. Here it is. Now I see on the bottom I created some sucs here. I don't want them to burn. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to scrub them up. I'm going to side a little bit here. I'm going to degrease that a little bit. There's a lot of fat here, so I'm going to remove some. I'm going to do what we call deglaze the pan to get those sucs. And then I will give it a little wipe, add back some of the fat that I keep on the side, and add the vegetable to finish it. Sucs are very, very important in the preparation, so you don't want to let them burn or waste them. Here, I'm going to take them and put them back here with a stock. A little wipe here. And now I put back the same fat that I used. to put my vegetables in it. And 
And I'm going to let those brown nicely. I'm going to add a tiny pinch of salt to them and pepper because I need to season as I go. Don't forget to like the video huh, if you like it. Give me some uh, questions here, post some comments, share it, we love that. Also know about our Android application and iPad application. If you didn't get it yet, please do so. Like this, you can access the channel from anywhere. Come and follow us also on Facebook. Okay, that's slightly brown, this is good. Now I'm going to add my apple cider vinegar to the glaze. I'm going to let that reduce. My oranges. Oh, I forgot my garlic. I'm going to crush that piece of garlic and add it to it now. I'm going to reduce that orange juice by half, then I will add my stock. So how do you know it's reduced by half? You just look at the consistency. It should be like syrupy consistency, like it is right now. So now to that, I'm adding my stock and some of my pork juice here that's very gelatinous and I'm gonna add everything here and that's gonna help to get a nice consistency to my sauce too because of the consistency the nice gelatin that's in to that pork juice I'm going to let it come to a simmer and then I will put back the meat into it and let it cook in. And as it reduces, I'm going to baste it to give it a nice glaze on it. It's going to be delicious. Simmering. Take the meat, put it inside. You just want to simmer and huh? you don't want it to boil too much be too much movement for the meat here and it may fall apart on you. And now we're just gonna let it cook slowly like that and basically what we want see as I'm shaking the pot the meat gets covered with some of the juice and this is what we want. At one point it's gonna be reduced down so I will need to use my uh, to help myself with a spoon to be able to baste it correctly. So as I cook that too you see here there's some fat so that fat I'm going to remove it as I see it, huh? we call that degreasing. I'm going to degrease that so it's not too greasy at the end and the sauce is not too cloudy. Here it's not about health, huh? since we're cooking pork belly it's gonna be very fatty anyway. It's just for the, the texture of the sauce on itself. So as you can see, huh, it reduced a lot and it glazed my meat very well. I'm almost done here. It's been glazing for a good 10 minutes now. Need to finish on that side a little bit. Ooh, yes. That's gonna be ready to be plated very soon. Put that glaze on top. 
Look at that. Very, very nice. I'm going to keep that aside for now and I'm going to make my vegetable and then I'll be ready to just plate it and enjoy myself here with that. Put that here. Take my sautoir. Put it here. Add a little bit, actually going to do oh no, a little bit of butter because I want to I want to brown my endives here and it's going to work better with some butter than olive oil. I'm going to do a little bit of olive oil too. Those endives have been cooked before with some uh, oranges and a little sachet of uh, spices and I tried them already like that. It's a delicious thing. And the artichoke they've just been cooked with a little bit of uh, white wine, olive oil, salt and pepper and uh, the carrot, olive oil was very cooked in and same with my switch chart here. But again, if you didn't watch the video on how to cook vegetable sous vide, you know, it's the time to do it, maybe after. Okay, the butter is melted. I'm going to add first my endives because I want to develop color on them. And then I will add the rest of the vegetables. So those vegetables are already seasoned, huh? No need to add any more at that point. If you follow the recipe that I made. Nice little color here, look at that. Beautiful thing. So I have color here, this is good. I'm going to add my carrots now on the side of that. After shock. So my vegetable are hot, now I'm going to plate. I'm going to take the pork belly, place that here like that, onto my plate. It's a large plate. We have a lot of company coming. Are I going to stay? No? No, I'm just going to put them this way here. Take my own dives, place them here. Carrot. New artichoke. Now, I'm going to do is finish that here. I'm going to add a little bit of butter into my pan to finish it up. And I'm going to use it to kind of sauce it. It's what we call monte au beurre. So it's a thick sauce, huh? It's more like a glaze. Okay. I'm going to take that and we're going to place that a little bit over here. 
played that. And here we have it, a beautiful braised pork belly with an orange and Vilstock sauce. And we use the process of sous vide and precision cooking. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy, and I see you next class. Bye bye.